Welcome to the Influential Leaders Podcast, where we talk to amazing leaders making an impact and changes within their industry and organization. Confidence is something that really comes up for a lot of leaders, and whether you're a CEO or an executive, confidence is what can help make or break you and lead when leading a team. So let's talk about who do we think need confidence the most? And today we talk to a lady in the sales industry and understanding how much confidence do you actually need when you're becoming a leader. For those of you that are looking to grow your confidence, we teach this in our Influential Leader program. But what it really is about is your mindset and your attitude. They play a significant role in building and maintaining your confidence. A positive mindset and a can-do attitude can help when you're approaching challenges and obstacles and give you a sense of resilience. But if you're a negative person and have a negative attitude and you feel defeated, that's when you get feelings of self-doubt and low self-esteem. By focusing on self-growth, personal development, self-care and giving yourself positive talk can help you develop strong and confident mindset that can help you achieve your goals and feel good about yourself and raising your confidence levels. For those of you out there that would like to work on your confidence so that you become the leader that you want to become, please reach out. But first, listen to this podcast and see how sales is impacting your career. Today we have Reina Fernandez, who's a great friend, but also an astute creative sales specialist and recruitment professional who believes in creating long-term relationships. And in fact, I think we've known each other for more than five years. Um, She adds value to the most growth industries looking for sales talent. And she's currently the director of Smart Talent Group, a Sydney-based sales recruitment agency. Welcome, Raina. Thank you so much for being here with me today. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Pleasure. Oh my gosh, I've got so much to share with everybody here today. And um, I guess one of my first questions is, is a lot of recruitment agents, and I speak to a lot of people in recruiting because obviously recruitment really does go a lot inside by side with leadership and getting the skills up for people. And so you've niched down, which I think is awesome. And so people are so scared to do that. You know, you always have these generalists and here you are in sales, smashing it out. What made you go down the sales route? Uh, Okay, well, I've been in recruitment for over 15 years, just a little bit about myself. I am um, a a very, I I knew recruitment was for me the moment I I walked into it. I haven't left the industry in 15 years and uh, you either love it or hate it in recruitment. You see a lot of uh, new recruiters really struggling to cut their teeth uh, in their first year, right? Yeah. So uh, it's a it's, tough role. Like it's massive, isn't it? It's a it's a massive role because it's a two edge um, sword. Like you got to manage your your candidates and your 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 clients. You've got clients. You've, got, you've got two clients, and you've got to yeah. manage that. So imagine that, and you're doing that daily, and um, and th- and there's volumes and there's targets, and and it is stressful, right? So. Um, doing that in and out for 15 years, you then realize what you love. Uh, and they say, right, you master your craft by practicing every day. So what's what I love about sales, and I actually picked this up when I worked with some some of the best sales leaders who have now gone off to start tens and $20 million businesses and running them really successfully. So I worked with some of the best um, sales leaders and uh, uh I would say uh, CEOs at the time that I had the opportunity to work with and they all worked with me for seven years, almost seven years. And that's where I learned to do things differently uh, and how to master your craft and how to change your thought process. But they were all in sales and sales yes. is a skill, right? So yeah. it, it, it's a sport. You're constantly playing it to, to, uh, to get better at it. Uh, but it's also unlike any other um, recruitment sector because or you know because it's it's not a skill uh, a technical skill or a specific skill it's all about the the attitude the yeah. the investment and knowledge the um and the personal growth the um 
it, it's it's interesting stuff. It's all about human connection. It's all about it's everything we talk yeah. about that 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 drives a, a, a selling piece, right? Uh, and and salespeople we know aren't they aren't they aren't born. They're made. So I love I like that. that. Yes, you can learn. <laughs> you can learn. You can learn. So they are made, and I think uh, that's what that's what excites me about working in the space because I can understand people's journeys, but it's yeah. I'm not looking specific specifically for a technical skill set. And it's so funny because that's where when I come in is people have the technical skills but not those soft skills. So, you know, you've kind of got the people that we need to build the other team, other half of the team. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing, right? We're uncovering true, like we do, there's different spectrum, there's different roles within the sales true. True. space. So you've got your sales development representatives where you start off, then you've got your account executives, you've got your enterprise sales, you know, space, and then you've got your sales directors and your leadership roles. So at different stages in their careers, if you're, if you're, in it, if you're in sales for the long run, you've seen your 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 trajectory. You, you can see your trajectory, and you can grow. So the the people we're talking to, we've placed, uh, you know, five years ago as a sales development representative. Today, they're heading up heading up a sales team and managing a team of ten. And, and I guess it's that continuous learning journey. You you have to be on that. Yes, that's exactly right. And that's what I love about it because I'm always learning about people's growth journey, right? Yeah. And that's exciting and it's it's different. And they're good conversations. They're fun conversations. They energize me. And at the same time, uh, you, you're, you're constantly learning from your, from your clients or your candidates I because they're all about personal growth. They're all about, uh, you know, knowing what's out. They're curious beings. Sales yeah. is a very, very... Uh, you've got to be curious and you've got to be tenacious and you've got to be driven, right? Yeah. So that that's what excites me about staying within that niche. So so on that, I'd love to hear from you. What do you feel, and I know that you're smashing it, um, what do you feel is attributed to your success? Uh, I think the one thing that's been very, uh, I, I know I'm a really passionate individual, but apart from that, uh, I have three rules for uh for a sales professional and something that I believe and I do every day because I'm selling every day, right? Um, what's been really successful for me is, and, and the three rules for sales yeah, is I, I never love, I, I, you know, you don't, you are, it's the transparency, it's the, it's the service levels and it's, it's about being, it, it's, it's integrity, yeah. right? Your customers trust you, you know, you, you don't just understand their, um, their business need but you also uncover problems and you're, a, you're not a problem solver but a problem finder as well so mm -hmm. I do that particularly well uh, you know I'm really big on not comparing myself to anyone uh, so that's one of my my, my rules. That would be I, a big one I think because especially in a competitive sales uh, force within a business or an organization you know sometimes they make it competitive don't they like they set the KPIs to make it competitive. Exactly. So one of the rules for any sales professional and, and something I live by is that I only compare myself to the salesperson I was yesterday. I set my own targets and my personal, uh, my personal uh, goals outweigh my professional goals. Right. So, I mean, and I think that's what, that's what, that's what makes me successful is that I, but that's I live a lesson, that. right? Like you've come a long journey to learn that lesson, right? I have. It's been eight years in the making and, and I live by the three Fs, which is freedom, family, and fitness. I, oh, I keep awesome. That. I love that. That's so yeah. true. Yeah. So those are the three things I live by. And I think those, I hold them really close to me. I've got them on my vision board. I'm, I'm all about it. And, uh, and I think it's helped my success. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it means you're the fourth one, focused. <laughs> and focused. Yes. Oh, my, I'm going to add that to the thing, Sarah. I always knew that when we, when I leave a conversation or when I, when I, yeah, every time we get out of a conversation, I learn something new. So I love, I love catching up with you. Oh, I love meeting with you too. Like, you know, like I said, we've known each other for years now and um, always added value. And I think we're so aligned in so many ways, even just with what we're doing with our people that we work with. Uh, and, you know, you were talking about working with people and, you know, how's that going? What's going on? Do you need people to grow? What's important about working with um, your team? Something amazing happened last year and my husband decided to, to, uh, to quit his role. And uh, 
decided to join me. Fantastic. So, How's that going? <laughs> yeah, it's it's been um it's been an interesting ride, but it's been quite it's quite it's quite fun because I've got you know, we've grown and I needed the support and who best to handle my clients than someone that I I absolutely trust and who I believe has all the this you know the has the knowledge to be able to do that so he's led sales teams and he's um you know he's he's been he's been in the game himself so uh he knows he just needed to learn how to 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 how recruitment works but he's already brought his own clients on board with an innovative oh, nice. leasing space so he's, he's, keep, he's, making, he's keeping his keep <laughs> he's keeping his keep and he's paying his his salary which is great uh and that so we so we joined forces and uh, and I think the goal this year is to just uh, uh, knuckle down, get really clear about uh, you know our, our target sectors. It, it it's funny because with the economic downturn at the moment, technology at this at this point in time is getting squeezed, and yeah. we know that, right? I mean, it's it's terrible, but we want to make sure we we step back and we actually add value now to all our clients and candidates and and uh, and uh, do the best we can to make sure we're supporting them in a time like this yeah. so um so that's a sector so we've got to reflect and work out so i mean recruitment running a recruitment company you've got to have your finger on the pulse you've got to know where uh, which sectors are growth sectors and um and yeah, true. and 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 be able to capitalize and uh, and build those relationships really quickly and build trust um, so our, one thing that's worked for us is I went out and I went to a, a, um, a networking lunch. It was actually an invite from uh, Job Adder as one of their <clears throat> clients. And I met with James Scarn. Have you heard of James Scarn? No, so, he, so he's, um, he's a, a recruitment entrepreneur, but he's also someone that was the founder of Alexander Mann. And he, uh, he's been on Shark Tank and various, um, Okay. TV, you know television um shows and things like that and he's he's just he's just cha- he, he he's someone that's been quite uh he's inspirational to any yeah. any recruiter that knows of him because of the growth he's had and and the journey he's had right um and um i went there and i met with all these recruitment owners and funny enough they're like well you you recruit for sales people can you find us recruiters that can can um can jump into um work in the recruitment space but have a have a really strong sales background because if you think about it every mm-hmm. people have a, the wrong perception of what a recruit is all about it's it is a sales role it is absolute and look realistically you're always selling in some form in almost any role that you're doing unless you're completely tech, exactly. um yeah you're always having to do some sort of sales exactly so we put on the rec to rec hat and that space has been massive for us we've got uh, you know, some of the biggest recruitment firms all around um, Australia <laughs> calling us going, hey, can you find us X? Can you find us that? Because, you know, we've used Rector X, but they uh, they don't understand sales. So yeah. sales is, is a real skill. And I mean, I think uh, if you if you know how to um, understand what makes people tick and what they're what's going to drive them on a daily basis and what's going to get them up every morning to to perform. Yeah. And if you know what the triggers are and you know how to recruit really good salespeople, you can add value to any organization, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. been massive. So when you talk well, about realistically, focus, like if you're talking about business and, and growing your business, if you don't have the right sales team, your business you can't, can't grow. So with us, we're very specific about the sectors. We, we, we only recruit salespeople. We're going to narrow down to the, 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 the businesses that we enjoy working with because we do have, the choice to be able to do that because wow. you know it's it's unlike your you know it's unlike the um like an internal recruiter where you're stuck with your your um you know yeah. your the specific business or so forth and i think that's what i didn't enjoy in the uh the internal space is you know you d- you're unable to learn about different businesses and and how businesses are growing and and the exciting bit about uh you know uh, being part of that growth journey and and um, I think it gets a bit stale for me uh, because I'm one of those curious beings who likes yes. to keep growing and learning. Which I think would be very much on the profile of a salesperson. You know, most probably salespeople are a little bit yeah. extroverted. Not saying that introverted people can't do it. Of They yeah. definitely can. But I'm just saying, you know, in, in what you would really kind of expect 
someone that's typical would be more extroverted, but they're also more curious and they like variety. I think, you know, if you put someone that is in that personality profile into a job where they're just doing the same thing every day, yeah, it, it, they'd get bored. <laughs> exactly, exactly. On that and, note, and, yeah. And if they don't have a trajectory for go- growth and they don't have the right mentors and they don't have the right engagement, which is where you come in, Sarah, is, uh, and, and the leaders aren't self-aware on what that whole leadership piece is, that's where businesses fail. Because we all know, you know, if, if, even the salesperson, they don't join the business, they join the leader, that's right? True. And they leave purely because of the leader and yep. not the business. So it's and, about- it, and, it's, and it's unfortunately those leaders that don't get people like me in and they lose a the whole team. I've seen whole businesses go down because they've lost their they whole don't. team. They don't. They don't. And, and I think because the thing of is, the sales people have choices. You know, for they a do. salesperson, you, you can choose where you want to go. They do. And it's a, like, I think I think anyone, like especially when, like I know with my daughter, I'm teaching her to be the best salesperson she can be. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm teaching because- her to be leaders. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly right. Only because I feel that's a skill that, you know, not many, not many people, uh, folk, like they look at salespeople, they look at, that's not a career. Like, how yeah. do you, like, okay, so like a- the other, we don't talk about it as sales as such, but we, um, when we talk about leadership in our house, you know, obviously it's about emotional intelligence and, and things like yeah. that. It's also about being able to negotiate, being able to ask for what you want and speaking and, and look, both mine aren't, don't love getting up on stage speaking and, right. and to be honest, I don't. I never loved it. I just knew it was something that I needed to do, and I, I was good at it. So you know, I was kind of fallen into it a little bit. You know, when in the beginning, you know, many years ago, and now I do it on purpose, uh, which obviously is part of that focus. But I think speaking, which is really, I think, the core line of sales. You know, you need to be able to speak in front of people. You need to be able to get up in front of a group and talk. And voice, a voice is so important. You know, Sarah, you look at me ten years ago, and I. I would fear getting up on stage. Like I was such a little, I was so subservient. I was, I didn't have a voice. And you know what? I think it's that. And that's one of the reasons why I work with IWE is because I've come such a long way with being able to get up on, like I can get up anywhere and have a conversation, right? It's that, it's that confidence that you build. So we, it is confidence. uh, Yeah. And I've come, and it's purely because when you come, when you when you move countries and what you're taught in a and I, I'm Indian of, of Indian origin, you're um, you're molded in a different in, in, in True, a different way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, you, you don't see your parents getting up on stage. They're the ones that sit in the in the back and they listen. They don't they don't have a voice. They 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 are they are very nervous and they are scared and they um, they don't ask the right questions because they don't know how to. Mm-hmm. And I feel like those those basics of asking the right questions and just putting yourself out there and just having a voice is so important uh it is just it's the most important skill to have like i uh, the focus for every new immigrant is academics yeah you've got to study you've got to read be the top of your class you've got to get a in and in, in, in uh you know your all your grades need to be flashy and that's where the focus is it's yeah. not about building skills like uh, getting out there and you know let's let's work on resilience and let's work on uh, your body and your mind and none of that has a focus so it's 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 a real mindset shift for myself as well oh, yeah. and that's where that's why I love the space is because I'm constantly learning from uh, people that focus on purely something that I wasn't born with right yeah yeah so you've actually turned around what you were and and I guess almost invented yourself again and exactly self skills and went and listened and and I think a lot of it's putting yourself outside that comfort zone at the end of the day, isn't it? I've been I'm 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 like a fish out of water half the time. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. I just I see my husband always looks at me and he goes, "You can't do that," and I'm like, "Why not? We can do that." <laughs> I love it. I'm the same. You can't tell me I can't do it. <laughs> you can't tell me, don't ever say I can't. Don't use the word can't in this household. It doesn't exist. So um, yeah, it's been, so when you ask me, just going back to your question about what our plans are, our plans are definitely to build that that community page I spoke about. Yeah, for awesome. sales professionals. I am in the process of writing a book. Oh, fantastic! Can you yes. share the title or the genre? Uh, 
I'd rather not because, okay. you know, it's, it's I, very, I know I've, I've been told you shouldn't share until it's written. <laughs> yes, exactly. So we are, it's, I'm in the process and I'm, I'm currently, uh, I've enrolled in, in a course because I'm not a writer. So I need, I need the support of some professional writers to be able to guide me through that process. I've got, but that's for anything you want to do. If you want a new skill, you want confidence, you want got, to become a sales rep, you have to go and get the help. You've got it. And this is the thing, right? I mean, and that's where I say, I, I tell people, like even with your business, you, if you're sick, you go to the doctor, right? If you're, if you're, um, uh, if you, if you're, your your um pipe burst you call a plumber but if you have problems within your team why don't you call a leadership coach or if you if you want to find good sales people you can't just go out and find them you've got to look for you've got to find oh my gosh and, and this is where the my i just don't get it like people go out and buy investment properties without using a property investor as an expert to do that i'm thinking you're just burning your money so exactly why i don't i just don't understand and that's not everyone thinks like that and i think it's 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 Odd. It's it's interesting. <laughs> it is. It is. I think you know. I think slowly it's it's becoming more common, and people are realizing. And and look, there's been since COVID, there's been a huge movement in the leadership market. Like I've, I'm seeing so many job advertisements for leadership within you know really large organizations, and you know they're 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 spending millions of dollars in developing a leadership team to look after their staff. And so small businesses, you know, need to get on board with that. How do you do that? You can't spend millions of dollars on getting a whole team, but then, yeah, get some help, get the right salesperson, get the right coach. Mm. But I also feel, Sarah, uh, smaller businesses are, um, yes, they are restricted with the cash flow, but then if they focus on the right things, the cash flow will work itself out, right? So yeah. I think it's it's a double-edged edge sword and I think you've just got to have that different mindset. But I think they, they're getting there slowly. They're yeah. getting there. They, I think that's where that those, those group things come in, like group coaching and group communities, because you can hear what other people are doing and, and hear their failures and learn from that. And it's a quicker way to go through business because, you know, nobody knows really what, what should you do first. You know, is it sales? Is it marketing? Is it tech? Is it, you know, do you produce the product before you know there's businesses out there that want to buy it? And, you know, if you can go and get the experience of others and learn from them, it makes the journey a whole lot quicker. I completely agree, Sarah. I completely agree. And I think uh, it's it's the change of mindset. And that's where people like yourself and me come in, right? You've got to, if, uh, you know, if you, if, you, if you want it that badly, you will. And uh, it's surrounding yourself with people that actually have that mindset. Mm, very true. Very true. Growth mindset's good too. Uh, look, what about personality? So when people um, are hiring, how yeah. much do they look at someone's personal brand? You know, personal brand, I feel, has come up really okay. high on people's agendas these days. And, and I know myself, I would look at someone's socials before I hired them. So what would you say to someone that's in their career, maybe they're not really thinking about their social as a free thing, it's still a social thing for them? You know, what? how important is that? What are employers doing around that? Are they looking it's, at it? It's quite hilarious. I actually read an article quite recently and it talks about uh, resumes, actually get, paper resumes are going to be made extinct and later yes. <laughs> It's hilarious. LinkedIn's going to be the only way businesses are going. Oh, to that's that. awesome! And it's 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 going to be that. It, I I wouldn't I I wouldn't put it past. Uh, I think in the next ten years, that's how it's how it's going. Like they say, uh, jobs for the future, right? Evolve for the future. Uh, and if you're not on that, then then I believe uh, you're a dinosaur, and you're you're mm. from a from a as a sales recruiter because we are talking to people that are curious that are tech savvy those are the those are the key attributes or key skills that sales people need they be they need to be on top of their game when it comes to to apps tech speed all of that if you're not on linkedin and you don't have a network at least for us as a sales yeah. recruiter you can't be in sales because who's going to buy from you because yeah. let's be honest everything is online these days especially with covid as well yeah and most people on that like when you say salespeople, I want people to realize if you're in a leadership role, if you are head of a department, then you actually are in sales in some form. Yes, you're not selling your product to the customers, but you're selling the company's vision to your team. So you are still in a sales role. So this is important for you too. I completely agree. And I mean, I we 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 don't we wouldn't they'd be they they'd they'd get a rejection email from us. Thank you, but unfortunately we can't help you because 
uh, you know, in business, you've got to pick, you've got, you've, you've got to pick where you spend your time. And, and, uh, and I've, I've come, I've come a long way from learning how to do that because earlier I just extend and, and, uh, but now it's, it's very specific. I'm very structured and I'm very, um, I, I know how to spend my time, but it is, it is busy because we are in a, in a very busy, uh, industry being recruitment. Yeah. But saying that, um, yeah, you, you personal branding is, 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 is everything in, 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 in our specific space that we recruit. And, uh, and, and, and let's be honest, businesses, that are, are recruiting, especially at that enterprise senior level, you're probably already connected with the uh, with the hiring manager through various groups or mm-hmm, you've sure. got similar connections, all of that. And especially if you're selling within a specific sector, the chances are uh, you've already got an in-roll, right? You, yeah. you, you already put yourself ahead of the uh, the, the curve. Mm-hmm. So I guess um, it's it's extremely important. And um and also being able to get yourself endorsed, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, getting referenced online, getting, um, uh, you know, getting people to comment on your post and and uh, getting people uh, engaged online. Having a voice online is so important and, and, and being as authentic as you can online is so important because that's uh, that's pretty much your personal resume. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, I'm glad that dinosaur is going to go at some point. <laughs> it's 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 so sad. It's really sad because I've spoken to really senior sales leaders who come from a different age, and I've actually had to guide them and step by step and go, look, you've got such a great background, but you know you really need to get on there because they everything was a was their was their phone. They had all the contacts. They had a spreadsheet. Uh, they had the network. They had the network, and and they had the um the authority. The, 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 they could go in there and be. And in no time, they've been influencers online, but they just didn't know how to. Right. So mm. I guess it, it's a massive learning for oh, that age. Yeah, yeah. And look, I think you know, even just as sales people or business owners it's the same you know it's about the same sort of networks it's it's talking about marketing yourself you know why would people want to work with you and I think that's a really important part where we are working with you whether we're buying your product or not it's the person that we're wanting to know who's behind it exactly exactly yeah yeah so tell me more about you know what is what do people need to know in this industry what's important um I always tell my my clients, especially when they're looking at uh, an entry level sales professional, that you don't look at the resume. Mm. You know, it's not about the skills; it's about the attitude, right? And this is where uh, skills assessment comes in, right? This is where um, I look at I look at someone and I look at their personal uh, their personal achievements. You know, how have they built resilience? So, someone that has been, um, you know. Uh, has won an award in their drama school, and they they were they were competing against X Y like uh, X internationally or whatever, and that takes a lot of that's a lot of stress for a little kid. So yeah. so to be able to deal with that at a young age sh- shows resilience. So I tell uh, I I look at and then they realize you know what I want to do something completely different. They they they've done their first year of university and they they go damn I I think I just want to make money. Well, that's when they step in the sales. And they don't ever leave. Yeah. Right. Because you so can I, make money in sales, right? You can. You can. You can. So it's the, it's probably a, one of the highest paying professions if you're very good at it and if you stick within that space, right? So uh, I would say I would look at I would tell I would tell any potential client um, that or all my clients know this that you look for athletes, you look for sports people, right? Because a very very high performing athlete that has left their niche has got all the um the, the skills and attributes for a for a successful sales professional true what so what discipline discipline attitude yeah resilience uh hunger structure structure comes with discipline um and they've got um and they're just very gritted and they know how to follow direction Right, yeah. because when you when you start off your sales career, you need support and training, and you need to be someone that isn't a know it all, 
right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you need someone that is willing to put in the hard yards, but is disciplined enough to be able to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, yes, that's what that's what I would be, uh, especially at that entry levels. And I mean, if someone if someone's be, someone has made it in sales uh, and they, they're at that top level, then I would be looking at their uh, their career trajectory and how they've grown and which industries they've mastered and and uh, mm -hmm. and what their top achievements were. So I'd be talking about, you know, who they uh, who exactly are, what sort of price points are they selling at? Who are they selling uh, to? What sort of C-suite individuals are they talking to on a daily basis? So that's our screening process. We we get quite wow. granular about uh, you know price points, sectors, and we ask. Uh, and our network's so large that we can actually pick up the phone and talk to someone within the business and go, "Hey, um, you know X Y Z, you know of them." We wouldn't be getting uh, you know a very um, uh, detailed reference, but. At but our network's large enough that businesses can trust us that we would do the due diligence. I, I love that because I think a lot of people hire people without the knowledge and they're using a resume and and sometimes they, I love it. Like I had a client and they used a reference from the business that the person was in that they gave them. They said, I'll call this person. Yeah. And, you know, when we did the profiling, you know, they didn't quite sit within what they needed for the person. And I said to them, they're like, oh, but this, you know, the person at the business that they were in said they are really good. And I'm like, yeah, but you, you have to take that with a grain of salt, I said, because they might be happy for them to be moving on. <laughs> like, you don't know the situation. You need to actually do more investigating. <laughs> and I think that's where recruiters, like specialist recruiters come in because the uh, because the network's large. We just place an enterprise sales role and my client goes, uh, I, I, we'll do the references, but um, is there anyone you know from the past organisation, right? So I don't have to get a... Um, a, a thorough reference but it's just a, a quick uh, a quick call going well, you know, right away whether there's someone that's you know going to fit in or and, and or, it look and this company which i give them credit you know they always look about who's going to fit in the team more than exactly. over the skills and things which i think is and, really important the other thing I, I i look for in a sales professional i get my clients to look for is emotional intelligence right the the higher the emotional intelligence of a salesperson and the ability to build trust and, and really have great questioning skills uh, and some life experience, I think goes a long way for a good sales yeah. professional, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, and, and I think anyone in, in anyone, skills can anyone. go a long way. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, so, it, so that those are the few skills that you need. But you do need to be tech savvy. You need to be on top of what's happening in today's day and age, uh, yeah. you know, what apps are out there who's the the market leader and ex know know the space that you're going to be selling sure. in and sure. do your research i think if that if you can focus on that uh and, and if if businesses are looking for talent then that's what they need to be looking they need to dig deeper uh and 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 get quite granular about their questioning but at the same time dig, dig deeper yeah and i think that is really good that you know the the benefits of a recruiter is you can help someone with those questions and help you uh, go dig deeper because I've often seen people they give the the candidate especially when you're talking about a high level position they give the candidates the answer that they're looking for in the question and I'm like you're hiring a smart person as if they can't answer it the way you want to hear it and you know what the hard I think the hardest set, the hardest um, recruitment we're, we're actually in quite a difficult difficult niche although I love it because mm -hmm. you're talking to salespeople you know what <laughs> <laughs> they're going. To, they're going to tell you what you want to hear, right? Yeah. So you've got to cut through the fluff and go. I'm so okay. In in five to ten minutes on a screening call, I know if someone's blabbering on and just selling and telling me what I want. So then, I, then I ask for real. You've got to be really specific with your questioning because you're talking to salespeople. Yeah, right? that's true. There's they a lot of what they do. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of fluff there. So. Uh, it's 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 a tough one, and that's probably why businesses need sales recruitment specialists more because we're the ones that are not gonna because they they don't have any experience recruiting. Yeah. So we we, we 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 kind of get rid of all that fluff and and we get down to business. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Knowing who you're working with. Let me just share some uh, facts around sales that I think are going to be really important for anyone that's looking yeah, to that'd join, be good. that's looking to join the sales um, game. Uh, or this profession and uh, also I think any any sales professional in in the space would find this quite fascinating that sales comprises of 55% body language 30 33% tonality 
and 7% choice of words. So I think if you can focus on your body language, your, mm-hmm. you know, your, your uh, tonality, that goes a long way especially in that initial call or that initial conversation. Well, yeah, where if you're face-to-face, you know, those first three seconds are really important. Mm. And it's the energy you bring into the room, right? P- people read into that. So I think you need that in sales. And as a sales professional, discovery is more effective than disclosure. So this is where you're talking about the whole professional branding, right? Uh, get front of mind, educate your customers and add, add as much value as you can through various online channels because I think business you need to be out there and businesses need to businesses need to know you're out there and 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 they discover you if you're constantly adding value yeah true true yeah and the other thing i'd like to to share with you uh sarah and your audience is there's a very big myth around what sales is all about and through all my studies and my my um my understanding of working in the space we we I, did, I came up with five sales myths and we'll share those links with you. I, I'll yeah, perfect. There. We'll also share. Put them uh, in the uh, comments. Yeah, put it in the comments and we'll also, sh- because we had, we had quite, a, quite an interest and we added a lot of value to our sales community by sharing them, right? Um, I mean, it's quite, uh, so our, our first myth is that sales is a numbers game. Well, it's definitely a myth, right? Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you have every entry-level sales professional going into a business going, hey, um, it's all about the numbers, it's all about yeah. the numbers. It, it's not, not in 2023, right? Yeah. So I, I would say sales is not a numbers game. Uh, and as a sales leader, this is where you come in, Sarah, sales, sales is about focusing uh, on building trust, on triggering emotion, and sales is about the, um, the research. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sales is about rejection. That's our second list. Let's be honest, sales is not about rejection. Right. I mean, you know, you're already scaring this poor little person getting into the sales. And this is where sales leaders, leaders and mentors are so important. You know, you've got to you've got to focus on the human behavior and the learning go back and spending time with your customer. And, and you know what? You walk away going, hey, this solution isn't right for this person. And it's not rejection. It's about a conversation. It's, it's the mindset. Mm. It's it's yeah. a, it's the mindset. So it's not about rejection. And that's a myth. You know, yeah. they go, oh, you're going to have uh, 50 no's before you get a yes. That's, that's, you know what? You're having conversations. Yeah, true. Right? And if the solution isn't right, you walk away. Yeah, yeah. Right? You're adding value. So that's, the, that's a myth and it's a mindset. True. And salespeople are, you know, the third myth is salespeople are born. You're a born salesperson. No, you're not a born salesperson. You're made. And you're made with the right mentors and you're made with, um, uh, you know, by building resilience, by practicing your craft. Like you, you look at Tom Cruise and those actors out there, they practice every day. You know, they practice their craft every day. It's an innate ability to be successful in sales. So you're not born, you're made. And you make it by yourself. You make it yourself, yeah. right? And training improves skills. You know, uh, it's not training. It's, it's coaching. And this is, you know, ah, anyone, yes. uh, let's go in, let's go into a, a classroom of people and let's learn X, Y, Z. Let's read X books and buy books. No, 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 no. That's, that doesn't work in sales. It's mm-hmm. about, it's about really having the right people, the right sales team that surrounds you every day. So you've got to be surrounded by top performing salespeople. You've got to be with an amazing sales leader that knows his craft. And that's the only way you're going to learn by doing the True. role every day and practicing every day, and right? And mentoring you or coaching you around. Exactly. So yeah. training doesn't improve skills. It's coaching and surrounding yourself with the right sales professionals. So you become the average of the five people you, you spend your time with. Yeah. yeah. Especially in sales, right? Okay. Because you push that. And the, and the fifth one is every lead is a lead. Every lead is in a lead. You know, and if you're being told that by your sales leader, then you've got to reflect because um, if you're cycling through hundreds of leads and getting nowhere, that's that's just that's that's definitely a myth. It's not a lead. So I think if they spend, I mean, in this day and age, it's about you know uh, research. It's about the online. Yeah. It's it's about building your brand online, oh, and yeah. it's about mm-hmm. adding building influence and authority and credibility and becoming an expert in the space which is going to then drive quality leads, yeah. right? And so I think that would be I'm... great for your energy as well. So where are you focusing your energy? You know, what's exactly. Your... So you focus 20... energy on proactive things such as your research, 
and developing a network and, and being the authority versus yeah. going through dead leads like, oh, I couldn't imagine anything worse. <laughs> Jesus. And this is what, right, and this is where it go, goes back to that whole uh, online credibility uh, expertise. Showcase authority and credibility expertise online and your leads will come and follow because you're actually adding value to the mm. space that you're working within right mm. so that's that's definitely a myth within the sales space so those are our top five myths that's and awesome. uh, thank you I think add value. you're very welcome hopefully it'll add value to any uh, sales professional that uh, that's listening to to this or oh, i think any entrepreneur oh, to be honest, i anybody. really think entrepreneurs business owners <laughs> leaders within teams you know all these are all skills that they need to think about and and the principles are the same for success exactly exactly and i, I think it depends on how you define success <laughs> so true so true so look it's a it's it's, it's a self-made uh, uh profession sales and i think um you make it yourself that those are my closing um that's my closing statement and, and there's always sales room for sales you know it's, it's I, I think it's recession proof in a lot of ways it is it is well that bring i think i've covered all my yeah you I have thank I, you so much hopefully i've added some value and given you guys some golden nuggets there but um may may you can get back on darling oh wait before you do just uh, let me outro so you know, if you're looking for a talented professional, then definitely seek professional help. And Raina Fernandez at uh, Smart Talent is going to help you do that. So thank you everyone for coming on and enjoying and joining us today. And thank you Raina for sharing all your beautiful knowledge and insights, which you've worked hard to get. But please don't forget to subscribe down below and leave a comment to join the conversation. And if you have any topics that you'd like to discuss further on Influential Leaders Podcast, then please reach out. The link is in the description and we'll see you on the next one.